where Helen and Tim travel, a couple based in the Pacific Northwest that quit our jobs in January 2023 to travel the world. We just got to country number nine in our full-time travel journey, Switzerland. And for the next five weeks, we're on a Euro trip with Tim's Hi. parents, their first international trip, and we can't wait to show them around. We first celebrated Tim's 40th birthday in Germany, and now we are in the Swiss Alps. Join us as we explore and go to the top of Europe. We visit the Jungfrau Jok, the highest accessible railway station in Europe, sitting at over 11,000 feet or 3,400 meters. Good morning from Wengen, Switzerland. As you can see behind me, we are staying in this chalet and we have this beautiful view of the Bernese Alps. Today, we are taking you on an adventure to Jungfrau Jok, which is the highest accessible point by train in Europe, or as they call it, the top of Europe. We're gonna be taking a few trains to get up there. Apparently there's a few viewpoints and even an ice tunnel up there. So we're very excited to take you to this UNESCO World Heritage Site. So Tim and I were actually in this area about four years ago. We visited the town of Muren. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong and putting a very American accent on it. We absolutely fell in love with this area and knew that we would be back for round two, a breathtaking part of the Swiss Alps. And now we're checking out the town of Wengen, which is above the Lot of Bruton Valley, which has some of the most iconic views, including the cascading waterfall through the valley. Bengen sits at about 4,000 feet elevation. It's just super quaint and cute. There's chalets everywhere. It's definitely a tourist destination. Quite expensive. We're staying here for about $1,500 for a two bedroom and it is for about five nights, six days. So we are on a five-week Euro trip and Tim's family is joining us. Tim's parents, yay, say hi. While we're waiting on the train, I'm gonna fill up some water from the local spring. Get on your feet, these sights to see. Rolling hills or city streets. Ocean to ocean and all in between. It's out there just waiting on you and me. Take it in, we got no plan. So we just got off the Kleinschendig station from Ladebruten to Wengen and then Wengen up to the Kleinschendig uh, stop. Sorry, there, the train just started so it might be a little loud. And so you do have to take two trains and then a third train up to the Jungfrau Jok. And we'll definitely drop some helpful links in the description below for you to learn more about the Jungfrau Travel Pass, which is what we're traveling on, as well as other options for transportation. How much colder did it get up here, Cindy? Oh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. 10 degrees. Difference in temperature. <laughs> 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 colder than <laughs> that. to get our own cabin because everybody seemed to go into the first cabin instead so it's nice to be able to get some space and then take in all the views on the way up. We wanted to take a quick break to tell you about our new Patreon page. Join our community to talk all things travel, credit card points, and miles and financial independence. We host virtual meetups, workshops, and one-on-one -on -one chats with us. Our first three-day workshop, The Power of Points and Miles, How to Earn Your First 100K recordings are now available. Visit patreon.com slash Helen and Tim Travel for more information. Now back to our video. So you have the option to have a seat reservation. We highly recommend it during the summer busy seasons of May through September. Thirty-four meters of altitude between you and the Jungfrau Joch, top of Europe. But first of all, a stopover at the Eismere station 
gives you the opportunity to take your own souvenir image of the perennial ice. We caught the first train of the day and about partway up to the Yungfrau Yoke, you do get an opportunity to take a look at the glacier viewpoint. The Alich Glacier can be seen from Jungfrau Yoke. It is the Alps' largest and longest glacier lying in the Bernese Alps of South Central Switzerland. It is also today one of the most thoroughly researched and visited glaciers in the world and contains over a fifth of the total ice volume in all of the Swiss Alps. After an hour and a half, we finally made it up to the Yungfro Yuk. It took three trains from Bengen, so if I imagine if you're coming from the valley floor to the Ladenbluten area, up to Yungfro Yuk, it might take almost two hours to get up here, so make sure you allocate plenty of time. We did first take the first train, so it's definitely helpful to be able to have the flexibility in the morning. You gotta go up. We finally made it up to Jungfrau Jok, the observation deck. Just some fun facts, the construction of this train up to the Jungfrau Jok took place about 1896. It took about 16 years to build it and it was built all through manual labor with ice axes, picks, and a lot of now modern day engineering now that they have renovated uh, the train line throughout the course of the last century. So beautiful. Once you get up the elevator, there's several viewing decks here. There's an upper platform and a lower platform. It's 360 views of all the glaciers around this area. And we're about to go down and take the elevator to do a little walk. You can actually walk on the packed down snow and make it, it's like, like about a 30, 45 minute trail and see better views of the Jungfrau Mountain, which is one of the tallest summits in this whole entire region. You definitely want to check the webcams on the website before you come up uh, or buy your tickets, check the weather because there's a lot of times that you won't get the views. It's a lot of money to waste if you can't see anything. So definitely check the webcams. So it costs around 250 CHF for the Jungfrau Travel Pass and you have to buy an additional ticket to get up to the Jungfrau. So the additional add-on with the Jungfrau Travel Pass cost around I think around 63 CHF with a $40 add-on for the reserve seats. So all in, you know, we did get the four-day pass for the uh, trains around the area, but kind of all in, if you're doing an addition, you're going to be paying over $100 plus CHF for the ride up here on the trains. So if you want to do the hike on the snow, you'll have to head back down the elevator as well as to catch the ice tunnel. Um, it's on the lower section of the Yangfrau Milk area. So we're about to go through the Ice Palace and there's two routes you can take, the 15 minute route, but I don't think you actually get the full experience of the Ice Palace, so definitely take the longer route if you can. It's definitely a little slick, so make sure to wear some shoes with good traction. Of course, I think tennis shoes are fine, uh, just have to walk a little bit slow, otherwise <laughs> you might slip. It's pretty cool being able to build this on top of a mountain and let tourist experiences. It is a very busy place, but it is a neat experience. It's cute to see the little squirrel, I think it's a squirrel, from Ice Age. So cool to see the 
covered cave or the ice cave covered wall to wall and it's a very chilly experience oh. so make sure to bring oh, okay. a jacket if you are heading in this way so we read coming in that the hotel up on the mountain had a fire back in the 1800s when it was first built and luckily they were able to restore some of the areas There's actually opportunities for some sledding, as well as a little bit of hiking on the snow. The groom, and it's pretty packed down. Still a little bit slick, so if you feel like you have troubles with traction, definitely bring your trekking poles. We found out today that the walkway or the hike out to the base of the mountain is closed unfortunately so there's like a lighting system that tells you what's open on the mountain and it's kind of a bummer but if you do end up wanting to do the hike out to the base of the mountain make sure to allocate at least three hours today we're just gonna be eating our lunch chocolate truffles and making our way back down the mountains on all the trains so there is also a lint chocolate shop up here for those who are looking to get their Swiss chocolate fix. What was your favorite part of the Young Crowd? Didn't actually have a favorite because there's so many things to see and do. The Ice Palace is pretty cool though. Looking out on the glacier, overlooking the glacier was the best part, I think. I think the consensus of the group is that the Jungfrau Yoke is definitely worth coming up. The 007 Schilthorn was not our favorite, so if you're only here for a limited time and you have two days, make sure to check out Jungfrau over Schilthorn. We think it's more um, worth the money, especially if you're in the area, to catch the stunning views of the Alpine Glacier. Tim wasn't feeling so great today, so he is not on camera nearly as much as he usually is, so you got me today. Hopefully that's okay. We are taking the train, but we are going to take the other route down to Grindelwald. Grindelwald. So far we've been on the train for about 20 minutes. It's quite the journey to get back down. They also gave us some chocolate, not that we didn't already buy some at the lift store. So good. The Eiger Glacier Stop. It is a great stop for hiking trails everywhere. It's a great stop if you want to get grand views of the hanging glaciers of Jungfrau. Another popular stop on the way down from Jungfrau Jok is the Kleine Scheindig Station. There are great hiking trails as well as rest shots, and you can catch the gondola down to the town of Grindelwald. Switzerland is one of Tim and I's absolutely favorite countries in the world because there's just a world-class system of trails, so much variety here in the Swiss Alps, and we're super excited to take you to Mirren tomorrow to do some Via Ferrata. We really hope you enjoyed our journey up to Jungfrau Jok today. If you have any questions, definitely drop them below. I'll put some helpful links in the description. The Jungfrau Jok attracts over half a million visitors a year. It is certainly a place to see with your own eyes. The Swiss Alps always seems to keep calling us back, and it's certainly a breathtaking part of the world, and there are many other pockets to explore. We are grateful to be able to experience this place with Tim's parents, and seeing the joy on their faces on these beautiful landscapes is priceless. Thanks so much for tuning in to our travel vlog. We appreciate you all watching. Visit HelenandTimTravel.com to sign up for our newsletter, like and subscribe to support our channel, and to follow our journey. We will see you on the next trail.